What's going on? What's going on? Check one, check two. My mic sounds nice. Check one. My mic sounds nice. Check two. My mic sounds nice. Check three. Are y'all ready? What's going on with Poppin' 100 Cent's crew? I just came popping in, you know what I'm saying, to share a little bit of some Brooklyn news with y'all, because apparently Brooklyn back on is wildin' out type stuff, you know what I'm saying? Wild Bill style, you know what I'm saying? The OK Corral out here. So I just wanted to touch on a story that kind of hit close to home. Um, this happened on Thursday. Uh, there was a shooting on a New York City train, um, the A train to be exact. This happened 4.45 p.m. Thursday evening. And basically you already, well, if you, you know, everybody knows around that time, 4.45 in the afternoon, that's like everybody's getting off of work. Kids are coming home from school. Some people are heading into work for third shift, depending on what you know what shift you you, you work. You know what I'm saying? So basically, um, on the A train, this was at the Hoyt, Hoyt and Skimmerhorn Street station. A dude was already on the train. A 32 year old guy. He was already on the train, and a 36 year old guy uh, entered the train um, at that stop. Uh, as far as the reports are saying, you know, an argument ensued, you know, argument occurred, verbal altercation, which escalated into a physical altercation. So the 36-year-old man that got on the train basically physically attacked the younger 32-year-old that was that was already on the train. He was with the young lady, by the way. So uh, let's just see here. Let me just pull up this clip for y'all. And I'll let y'all see what happened after that. Like I said, it started off verbal and it uh, transpired into the physical. It transformed into physical. So, uh, trigger warning, trigger warning. You know, I'm about to play this clip, y'all. So, trigger warning, please. Okay? Becomes physical. At one point, a woman tries defending the smaller man by stabbing the attacker across the back. Moments later, he becomes enraged. He pulls a gun from his jacket and approaches the two of them. The woman making the video will cower in fear, so the rest happens out of view. Police say the smaller man will wrestle the gun away, then shoot the attacker in the head. Minutes later, the man was rushed from the station to nearby Methodist Hospital, where trauma surgeons managed to save his life. It Yeah, so uh, the guy, he gets on the train. He starts with another guy that's riding the train. I guess, you know, just minding his business. Didn't really look, you know, wasn't looking for anything to pop off. And apparently he physically attacked him. So I guess, there was, you know, the woman that was with the younger guy, the younger gentleman, you know, she wanted to defend him. So she had a sharp object. She did, uh, she cut him across the back twice. She stabbed him across his back twice. Um, if you pull up the video, uh, make it a little bit bigger, uh, shout out to ABC News. You guys can check it out there as well. Go to their website and make it bigger. You can actually see the blood coming through like his white t-shirt. You can see the blood coming through on, on, on his lower back. So, you know, we then know that he was stabbed. So once he stabbed, he takes off his hoodie and it's like, oh, so you stabbed me? Like you stabbed me for real? And proceeds to pull out a weapon. Uh, a gun basically on on both of them and everyone on the train is running like to the opposite end of the car now keep in mind we have uh letter trains in new york city and we also have number trains in new york city some trains depending on the make and model some trains you can go in between the cars if you don't, you know, if you want to exit the car while the train's in motion, they do have sliding doors. You can go in between the cars. Something like, you know, like when you go through with Amtrak, you know, something to that effect. But you pull the doors, they're not automatic. But on this particular train, there is no other car to go to while the train's in motion. You are stuck in that car. So can you imagine the sheer panic, the sheer fear, the anxiety that these people felt being in that car with a person shooting a gun at two people those bullets could have ricocheted you know he could have missed he could have just waved his hand he could have hit you know just went up in the air hit somebody the wrong way god forbid thank god it didn't but yeah that's what he did and well this was this is what it's leading up to uh as of yesterday 
Now, I thought the perpetrator, the guy that got on the train, that did the shoot, you know, that had the gun, I thought he was the one that actually shot the guy, the younger guy. No, that little guy wrestled that gun away from, um, you know, the bigger dude. And he ended up shooting him with his own gun. <laughs> Check this out. Chaos erupting on a subway train in Brooklyn. The chilling video is some passengers were trapped on a train before running for their lives. Gunshots echoing inside that train car after a fight. And this afternoon, the man who was shot in stable condition. The other man involved in the fight in police custody. And now police are looking for a woman who stabbed one of the men. Right now, this is a look live at that subway station in downtown Brooklyn where the shooting happened any minute now. We're expecting an update from the NYPD on their investigation. We'll bring that to you live as soon as it begins. Meanwhile, we just heard from MTA CEO and Chairman Jano Liebert about an hour and a half ago on Mornings at 10 about what the MTA is doing to try to crack down on the violence. That conversation coming up in just moments. But first here at noon, we do want to get right out to NJ Burkett live in downtown Brooklyn with where this investigation stands right now. NJ. Right, Mike, both men have criminal histories. We now know that the wounded man survived four gunshots and two stab wounds. The man who fired the shots has been in police custody, as you said, since last night, arrested on the platform shortly after the shooting. He has not been charged as NYPD detectives continue to sort this out. Yeah, so... Got got pretty crazy on that train. Got real crazy on that train, and oh, this is just this is just one of many incidences on the New York City uh, transit system. Gets a little hairy on the trains and the buses. So, oh, y'all, just be careful out there. But I I brought up this. Uh, you know, I wanted to inform you guys that the person, the guy that actually uh, took the uh, the ag- the aggressor, we're going to call him the aggressor, they, uh, the guy that wrestled with him with the aggressor and actually took his weapon and shot him with his own weapon, he's not going to be charged. Yes, he's not going to be charged. Police are saying that he acted in self-defense. So let me just read a little bit of this article for you guys, okay? And again, this is from um, ABC7, uh, okay? So y'all can go online and read the article as well. Um, basically, it says here, no criminal charges are being filed against a 32-year-old man who shot another man during a fight on a Brooklyn subway train as fellow passengers ran for their lives. On Friday afternoon, the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office cited evidence of self-defense as the reason no charges are being filed at this time. But the investigation is ongoing. The 36-year-old victim was shot four times with his own gun. Okay, so he definitely learned to mean to fuck around and find out. Okay, the article goes on to say, according to police sources, he was armed with a knife and a gun and acting as the aggressor when he got into a dispute with a 32 year old subway rider. Like I said, this happened on the A train, 4.45 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon at the Hoyt and Skimmerhorn Street Station, which is also a key um, a key part of this story as well. Because the Hoyt and Skimmerhorn stations in New York City, we have certain train stations that have uh, many police precincts in them, like little mini police hubs. So uh, Hoyt and Skimmerhorn is one of those stops that has that so i do believe that's why the police were able to act so quickly and respond to the you know the chaos and the mayhem so quickly and in a you know in a, in a smooth motion and a smooth pace because they were right basically they were upstairs so they basically they, you definitely can hear the shots ringing out from you know from being where the where the hub is located it's actually on the upper level of the train station the trains are down like underground and then you have some stairs and then you go to the upper level before you go to go above ground so they but they definitely heard those shots and I'm sure they came rushing through because they actually arrested uh the 32 year old they arrested him on the platform right then and there. So, ooh, it's a little crazy now. So uh, Friday uh, Friday morning the uh, police officials they're also looking for um the female that was on the train that stabbed the guy twice. They're they're looking for her now. So the hunt is on for her. 
Um, and I would just say to turn yourself in because you were trying to defend, you know, the gentleman. Um, but he actually did pull out, you know, a, a gun. You know what I'm saying? Which is New York is not an open carry state. So how that's going to work. But both like like the uh, like the uh, newscaster said, both gentlemen had uh, criminal backgrounds. So I guess we'll see how this goes. I mean, he wasn't charged with shooting the guy, you know, like attempted murder or assault. But, you know, I don't know how that's going to work for him as far as, like, a weapon. But, you know, he really didn't have a weapon. So I don't know if the woman's going to be charged. So, I, you know, I'll keep you guys updated. We'll see how that goes, okay? But I just was to my little piece of advice for y'all, sir. You know, he's recovering. He's in stable condition now. They uh, took him over to uh, New York Presbyterian Broken Methodist Hospital. Um, he was in critical condition, but now he's in stable condition. Sir, my advice to you is renew your membership at those karate classes because guns are not your thing, sir. You not only got stabbed, you brought a gun and a knife and still lost the fight. I have no clue how that works, but it just kind of didn't work out for you that day, sir. So my advice would be to just go on back to karate class and just renew it, okay? Renew that membership okay because people not playing out here all right so that's you know when y'all be like you know why are y'all new yorkers why y'all so aggressive why you so uh why you so loud why you so this because you know stuff like this you gotta keep your head on the swivel you know what i'm saying you gotta you gotta be prepared at all times you gotta be be on alert you know what i'm saying but i said all that to say now this is according to eric adams we're gonna side out him for a second <laughs> Uh, allegedly this is according to eric adams transit crime is is two percent of the crime in 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 the city of new york but it says it's two percent now they, they're saying crime on uh transit crime that includes buses and trains transit crime accounts for two percent of crime in new york city really you sure about that i think we need to recount that one but it is, but it has a huge disproportionate impact on people's sense of safety. And it does, because it seems like every time you ride the train, something's happening. There's always some police activity, the trains are delayed, they're rerouted, they're rescheduled. And it's always and the, the common announcement is police activity. So that gets people, you know, a little bit paranoid, you know what I mean? A little concerned. A little concerned, I will say. I won't say paranoid, a little concerned. But this is according to Mayor Eric Adams. Mayor Eric Adams has insisted the deployments of... Now, this I did not know. The shooting happened despite the largest deployment of police manpower in the transit system in decades. And also last week, the National Guard began conducting random bag checks at major rail terminals. So now we have the National Guard down there just, if they really want to, they can just really nearly ask you for, you know, let me see what's in your bag. So I don't know, it's kind of looking like this, you know, they're kind of preparing us for martial law to come into, you know, come into effect. Y'all just be careful. Keep your head on a swivel. Make sure y'all got some batteries. Stock up on some canned foods. I don't know. Get you some supplies medical recreational all that good stuff make sure y'all prepared because it's looking kind of i don't know it's looking a little hairy out here especially in new york now new york back on that wild bill style Woo. yikes but anywho y'all that was um that's what's going on you know what I'm saying? That's what's going on out here in New York City. You know, I try to bring y'all updates and drop down in the comments. Let me know on um, what's some issues and stuff, some crimes, some stories going on in y'all neighborhood. Now, you know, don't give me Ray Ray Rob the liquor store last Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Some issues that's ongoing in your town and your city that you want to shed some light to, okay? So y'all just let me know. Hit me up, drop down in the comments. Hit the like button, share, and subscribe to the channel. Y'all can also hit up the cash app if y'all feeling generous. I appreciate it. But I thank y'all so much for tuning in. And I'll be back with a little more news bites here and there. All right? All right, y'all. Huntington's crew, I'm out. See y'all in the next one. Later.